Hi everyone, how are you? In today's video, I am going to show you other uses of the indirect function. So in the previous video, I showed you how to use the indirect function in a common or basic way. If you haven't watched that, and if you are in or if you're not familiar with the indirect function, I suggest you watch that first. I'll put the link in the description below. So now let's jump to this uh, worksheet. And here I want to show you how to create dynamic VLOOKUPs, dynamic COUNTIF, and even dynamic uh, dashboards using the indirect function. So the first table here needs the QA scores from week one, week two, week three, week four of the February worksheet as dictated by cell B14. So we have the data over here that we need to gather the data from. So this is a job for a simple VLOOKUP. So let's jump to that. So equals uh, VLOOKUP, open parentheses. We're going to VLOOKUP A4, comma, and then we're going to pick up from the February worksheet, highlight A to B, then 2, and then 0. So there we have okay, our VLOOKUP, double click, to get the rest. However, if we are going to see the context of this file, we have a drop down actually at cell B14. And if I change this drop down into a different month, then my VLOOKUP will not change. It will stay at the February lookup. So again, we will use indirect to fix this problem. So to start, you have to go back to your formula. And then remove the worksheet name because this is the one causing our formula not to change, not to update. And we're going to use cell B14 as the reference for that worksheet name. And then since we're going to double click this later, we have to make it absolute. We're then going to concatenate that segment of the worksheet name that we just sort of like divided or destroyed into just the text string which means that if i enter this at this point it will not work because we just ruined what uh, we had a while ago the worksheet name into just text a combination of the word february exclamation point and then a b and like what was mentioned in the previous video this is where we can use the indirect function in order to promote, enhance, or convert whatever we have here into a real reference. So enter, we'll double click, and we'll see that it's doing fine. But now we're using the indirect function okay, for the cell reference. So therefore, if I drop this down and change to a different month, you will notice that it's now updating. So to double check, let's see what the January data look like. So we have 98, 87, 88, 92, which matches what we have here. And if I change this to a different month, say March, so 94, 96, 92, 93, and it's looking good. So here we demonstrated how we can use indirect together with the VLOOKUP function and make this dynamic VLOOKUP that changes depending on the value selected in cell B14. Now, I want to show you as well other ways that you can use this. For example, here, I want to find the total sales for Team A, Team B, and Team C, okay, for March in this case. So for March, here we have the second table with team names, and sales. So here we have to do a sum if. We're going to do a sum if, open parentheses, and then we'll go to March and get the data from column D because that's where the team names are, comma. Refer back to the worksheet, and maybe we don't need the worksheet name here, we simply need the cell. So we have to just type a10 
And then we need to get the columns or the names that we have to, uh, numbers that we have to add. So that's going to be back in the March worksheet under column F this time, and then enter. So we now have the sum of all team A's, okay, total sales for March, okay, for this cell. However, if we double click this one, okay, it seems that we're getting the right answer for all of this. But if we change the selection in cell B14, that will not change. Unlike the one, uh, the one before, the VLOOKUP, it's already changing. So let's do the same thing that we did with VLOOKUP. So this time, we have two references. Okay, the criteria range and the sum range. So therefore, we have to use indirect twice. So we'll, let's do the first one. So I'll get the value from B14. Make it absolute. Then concatenate with exclamation point in column D. And we have to put that inside the indirect function. We also have to do it for the second one. So just the same procedure. So we'll get from cell B14, with absolute, concatenate it, exclamation point FF, and then refer back to indirect. So enter, double click. Now we're going to see if it's going to work here. So I'm going to change it to January. And as you can see, it's now changing. And to cap this off, one nice way to finish this worksheet is if we have charts, right? So let's highlight the table that we want to convert into a chart. And then click insert and then let's choose our first chart so let's say for this one i will go for a column chart resize that and the next one let's say i want to make a pie chart out of this so highlight the cells insert let's make a pie And let's see how these charts will behave okay, when we change the drop-down cell B14. And there you go. So the data is now updating based on the value of the drop-down. So this sort of like makes a dynamic dashboard wherein the drop-down dictates which worksheet okay, the dashboard is going to show to us. And I hope you can see a lot of possibilities with the indirect function. But for now, okay, this is where we end. If you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section and I'll do my best to answer you as soon as I can. And also, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps our channel. But for now, this is it and I'll see you in the next one.